a 110 second string for Mike Morgan. Cooled off a little bit, especially in the second half without a mark in that second string. Went the last six frames without a mark. Now Tom tries to add to his lead on the head pin. We'll watch that piece of wood that's rolling out on the lane and see if it comes out gonna far come enough or it's going to roll out of play, it appears from here. It will pick up enough momentum to make the uh, left gutter. Now a clear shot for Tom, and he picks up the spare. Fourth mark of the second string for Tom Morgan, as he will increase his advantage over brother Mike. On the head pin is Tom. He'll put seven in the spare. He's at 110. 117. Will he pick up the spare? Almost picked up the split. He is at 119. And a 120 second string for Tom Morgan. He picks up 10 pins and leads by 22 over Brother Mike as we head to the third and final string of this Candlepin Stars and Strikes match from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We continue on WNBS TV. Tom Morgan will start us off in the third string, and he takes a 22-pin advantage over Brother Mike into the third and final string of this first match of our sixth ladder series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Dick Lutzk with Mike Morin from Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. Tommy starts out with a pretty good head pin shot and an eight pin drop. And he'll pick up the spare to start the third string. Our WNDS TV 50 crew working here at Lita Lanes, making it all possible. Our director is Ken Knight, working on audio, Larry Taylor. Our tape machines manned by Dave McCarthy. Graphics handled by Kevin LaFond. On video is Paul Hunter and our camera crew of Steve Giordani, Leroy Cass, and Jim McLean at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, bringing Candlepin Stars and Strikes to you each and every week on WNDS-TV. And a spare for Tom as he puts the pressure on Mike. Well, he sure does, coming in with a 22-pin lead and starting the third game with a pair of marks. Mike is certainly uh, coming out of a deep hole now, and it's getting worse with each frame. And Mike starts with a strike. Watch it again. Michael drops them all. Got a standing O from the Morgan clan on the front row as he came back. It's off the head pin, but leaves a makeable shot with the wood in pretty good position to help him out. The one, the three, the eight, and the ten for Mike Morgan. Will he get it? Oh, he threw everything at that ten pin, and it still stands. Shocking. And Mike cannot convert, picks up a nine. Nice letter from Frank Sandelli, vice president of a bowling league at the New England area YMCA bowling league team from Lowell, Worcester, Malden, and Newton. He writes, I watch your show every Saturday. Heard you say you'd like to receive information on bowling teams. And he punches, Tommy punches through a half Worcester on a spare. He had a one fill earlier, a two fill early this time around. So I'm sure he's hoping that doesn't come back to haunt him later on. unique part of the league, Frank Sandelli writes, was during league play, each team rolled both duck pins and candle pins. Whatever the host team rolled on their lanes, the other team followed suit. League play in those days was rolled at a local YMCA, and he sends along a nice oh. program. From 1971. From 1971. Oh, oh, oh. And a PS, he'd like to add that we run a nice tournament. I'm sure the bowlers and fans appreciate 
by the following we have both of the lanes watching on TV. Good luck and keep up the good work. Frank Sandelli, thank you very much for that nice letter. We should probably send these back to him when we're done. But it, uh, there's some interesting things about the bowlers and their league and their matches. April 24th, 1971. Wow. We're gonna open up our own bowling museum, Dick, with all the things people are sending us. Couple of tens for Tom. Now Mike, trailing by 24 pins. Needs to mark right on the head pin, but right through the head pin with a spread eagle. Mikey was in the Tournament of Champions last year, second seed behind Gary Carrington, who ultimately went on and won the Tournament of Champions. We never saw Gary this year. I saw Gary actually a few weeks ago, and he was very close to qualifying Dick for this final ladder. He, he said uh, he was in fifth place going into the fourth game, or fifth game, and ended up with uh, a 105 or something, which, which knocked him out to replace, be replaced by Tom Morgan. So we hope to see Gary Carrington next season. Mike in the fourth frame, breaks up the split. Now let's see if he can take advantage of it. He needs a mark desperately, he cannot do it. Yeah, the key is to hit the spot right between the one and the two, which he did, but didn't quite have the right angle apparently. And a 10 box for Tom as we go to the break. It is a 25 pin lead for Tom Morgan over Brother Mike with six boxes remaining as Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues from Lita Lanes in Nashua on WNDS TV. Tom Morgan ready to bowl, fifth frame, third string. Tom with a 25 pin lead over brother Mike. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. And Tom with a head pin shot leaves the five and the seven pin standing. Had an opportunity, Michael, during the uh, February school vacation to bowl with my daughter. Oh, look at that shot by Tom nice. Morgan as he picked up the 5-7 split. And he's getting an ovation from the crowd. What a great shot by Tom Morgan. You don't see that made very often without wood. He slid it over perfectly. Cut shot. And picked it up just as they diagram on the chalkboard. Great spare for Tom. Now working on the spare. He will put six in the spare. During February school vacation, bowled with my daughter Allison at the mm -hmm. Hub Lanes in Manchester. And spoke with uh, Steve Cavanaugh, who was managing at the time, and he was telling me that the uh, enthusiasm among young bowlers has increased dramatically in, in recent months. And it's, it's great to see with all of the programs that are being offered at the Candlepin houses around the state, and the different programs, they have glow bowling, they have music, they have all sorts yep. of different things going on, and the kids are really taking to it. I think one of the problems with Candlepin is that there's been so many other activities for the kids, but all those other activities are so much more expensive. So I think uh, today's younger people are rediscovering the game, as uh, the gentleman points out at Hub, Hub Bowl. Look at Mike try to make a split. Is your daughter involved in a league at nope, all? Or not, just, uh, not at all, nope, no. But uh, loves to bowl, and, and we will do it more often because I love it myself. And... Uh, Steve Cavanaugh was telling me that uh, Hub has leagues every night except on the weekends. They have uh, uh, 10 in all, ranging in age from 25 to 85 years old. And, uh, they've redone that, that house. It's, it's really quite nice. They've got an upstairs, downstairs situation, and uh, Kevin Demers has owned it since 1996. Uh, Hank Baudet was a longtime owner before that. And the interesting story about Hank, and I remember bowling at the Hub years ago when I lived in Manchester the first time, is that... Uh, he had a, a very close personal relationship with George the Animal Steel. <laughs> Is that and right? There were pictures of uh, George the Animal uh, in the house and why way back be? when. <laughs> Somehow they just connected somewhere along the line. Well, that may be a whole new angle for Saturday Night Bowling. You know, mud wrestling, you know, glow bowling, turnbuckle. Look at Tom try to pick up another spare.
That, that'll be an eighth box for Tom right there as it went into the gutter a bit prematurely. 